It is impossible to be perfect in a field where one's work is always judged subjectively. Nevertheless, every form of art has what many consider to be perfect works. For movies, we have Shawshank Redemption, The Godfather, The Dark Knight. For art, we have The Mona Lisa, A Starry Night, The Scream. And for manga, we have Berserk, Monster, Vagabond. I say this to say, although it is impossible to officially deem a work of art perfect, it doesn't mean that the audience has to stop searching for that perfection. Which brings me to today's topic. 20th Century Boys was almost perfect. 20th Century Boys is a manga written by Naoki Yurasawa. The base rundown of this manga is there is a cult that is led by a man called The Friend. And this friend is trying to take over the world. And what's worse is that this friend may have been a part of our main character Kenji's childhood circle of friends. Now, first let me start by saying I adore this story. I read all of it within a week. It was hard to put down, I just felt so submerged in this universe Yorosawa created. But towards the end, there was a problem. A problem that left me not feeling immersed in the story and ultimately deeming the series as near perfect. And also, spoilers warning, because what I will be talking about is quite literally the last couple pages of the manga. My problem starts with the introduction of Katsumata. Now I gotta say, I was a fan of the friend coming back to life, as I thought his death was premature, so I supported the fact that maybe he faked his death and came back to life. It added to his sinister nature and his feeling of immortality in the fact that no one can defeat him. For me, it made the story even better, and I have to say, I was screaming when I was reading about the sightings of Fukube after he died. But then, it's revealed that Fukube actually did die, and this is a different friend. Which, although I didn't like this version of the story from what I previously thought, I still accepted it because it made sense in the overall scope of the story, as there are just some things that can't be undone, like death. But my problem came in with introducing a new childhood friend towards the end of the story. This childhood friend being Katsumata. Now, Katsumata feels like he was just an afterthought. To me, it feels like Yorosawa originally intended that Fukube would come back to life, but instead he thought he'd throw in one final twist to throw off the reader. The problem is Katsumata has no value to us, the reader. We don't know about his life, we don't know his connections to the characters or his ambitions, he might as well have been some random guy on the street. I was excited for seeing who this new friend was because I expected it to be someone that is still relevant to the story, like it being Yaman or Sadakiyo. That would have kept me more invested in this world, but instead it was a kid from the past that no characters ever mentioned before or even seemed to remember. And it frustrates me because if there was two kids running around with the same mask, then you'd think that is something that the group would bring up especially when they were considering Sadakiyo being the friend. It just doesn't make sense to the story because although the point is made the childhood memories aren't too reliable, they still never forgot who they were hanging out with. And the reveal at the very end saying that Fukube died as a kid and the friend has been Katsumata makes absolutely no sense. It feels like a twist some kid would have made up to try and add some coolness to this story. If the friend was Tatsumata the whole time, that would mean Kana is his daughter. That would mean that his attempt to kill Kana didn't make sense as he said he would always protect her. That would mean it wouldn't make sense for Kiriko to say that this new friend isn't Fukube. And where did he even come from? Was he just hiding in his house till the friend died? His character really seems like it was just added to add one more cool twist. A twist that Yurosawa sadly didn't do right. My problem is, Yurosawa, you already had a perfect story. If you just had Fukube come back to life and the squad go against him and win, then the story would be perfect. There was no need for the ending to get so convoluted and for the ending to straight up contradict with different aspects of the story. It made a story that I consider perfect start to become weak and confusing. 
And if you haven't read the manga yet, I'm not saying to not read this manga. Because don't get me wrong, this manga is a solid 8 to 9 out of 10. It's almost perfect. But I am saying that this manga feels like what happens when a manga cut has a good manga going and wants to make the story cooler and longer than it should be. I'd say read it because it's an extremely amazing read, but remember to not go in expecting perfection. Let me know what you guys think of 20th Century Boy's ending in the comments, and I'll catch y'all later, deuces.